Howdy folks, this is Sean. Welcome back to my workbench. Today I want to work on my brother P-Touch Label Maker. It is a very handy addition to have on a workbench and I use mine quite a bit. I normally used it off of the provided 9 volt power supply. It's a 9 volt uh, 1.6 amp power supply and it plugs in directly to the side of the device. The power supply's leads suffered fatigue at the end of the strain relief and wound up breaking quite a while back. I temporarily fixed this but that was only a temporary fix. For quite a while here in the shop I have ran it on its batteries but it does take eight AA batteries and being that it uses a heat transfer method for printing its labels, it can go through batteries quite quickly. So today I'd like to fix the power supply for the label maker so that I can use it here on the bench again under uh, AC rectified power and uh, don't have to, to keep buying batteries for this thing. So let's get started. First, we want to open this up. I have had it open already, and you saw the top pop open there. Oh, it just closed itself back up. I did. So I, get, I gave it a, a good squeeze in my vise, my little, little vise I have here. It's a pan of vise. It's supposed to have a socket that it sits in and it's a uh, it, it can be tilted to any angle so you can uh, move your work to whatever angle is handy for working it'd be a really nice thing to have here in the shop but I don't have it I have the vice portion of one <laughs> so there's that Get a little squeeze. All right, this popped it right open earlier. Don't know why it's being as stubborn now. Let's try it the other way around. Maybe I had it the other way around earlier. That is entirely possible. Yeah, that's it. I had it the other way around earlier, so a little pressure goes a long way. Put that out of the way. We'll also set the, the actual printer labeled maker unit out of the way. Crank that down now as I'm sure it's up to temp. Okay. Um, I've already tugged on it right here. I don't believe this board is going to come out. It's potted in really well with your squeezy heat dissipating silicone, just general potting silicone. So it's not going to go in any further. There's your uh, PTC thermistor. I think it's PTC thermistor. Four diodes down there, full bridge rectifier, transformer, uh, class Y capacitor to make this a little more quiet because transformers are everywhere. A couple uh, output caps. I think this cap's on the input, that's on the output. I think. I'm not 100%, but anyhow, I've tried tugging on it and it won't come out. So I'm going to solder onto these leads and feed new leads back out. I had a power supply here I wanted to use. It has a nice long lead. Was this the one I wanted to use? Because this... What is this? Standard 12 volt 1 amp power supply. It's probably from uh, Security Best Tech is what it says. It's probably from a security 
closed circuit, you know, home surveillance type uh, system would be my guess. That's what that is. It's, uh, it's not the cutters I was looking for right here. So I'll cut that so that this is still useful for something and this is still long enough to work with this on the bench. Let's see if I can split this strain relief here to get the wires out. And do it without killing the wire, which is what it appears I'm going to do here. I wish I could just I don't have, I should have. Most of my good tools are not on the bench right now because I've either taken them off to work slowly because I knew that the task I had at hand the following day would have been made easier by a tool that I had on my bench. And so I'd take it into work. Which happens. And now I'm stuck with the basic bare necessities of life here on the workbench. Come on! How about you? I'm getting it. I'm getting it! There it is. About during time. Hmm, I got that one stripped back pretty good there. Alright, go ahead and split them out completely. And... There's that one. Yeah, that's not... Not very good cutters right there. They don't do anything very well. Well, I mean, they're, they're working for what I'm doing. I guess I shouldn't complain. Don't complain. I mean, I've seen people out there make $3 welding jigs using worse tools than I have. I mean... They used a couple hundred dollars worth of scrap to do it, but uh... all right, now I want to be sure we're doing this right. So, where is she? Woo! Cables on the ground. Okay. What is this? Bring this in here. Can't unplug this, you'll see what happens. Ooh. <laughs> Levels up and down, there we go. Alright. Negative nine. Positive nine. Alright. Yes. Yes. Alright, 
negative has the white stripey on it. Pick up our cable. This does want a... Ah, they went all Sony with this thing. It wants a uh, negative center, positive outer. Okay. So toning for the center. Alright, that's our center. So the white stripe is our outer. So the white stripe is our positive, where again here our white stripe was our positive. Let me double check that the, no, the white stripe was the negative here. White stripe was negative here, which should go to the center. Let me double check. AC, DC. All right, that is correct. So our white stripe is negative. Our white stripe is negative. Neg our white stripe needs to go to the center. Our white stripe needs to go to the center. And that is not our white stripe, so we are using opposing schemes there. Easy enough now that you know. Actually, that's a bit far out. Because I'm not going to have a strain reliever on there. I'm just going to be careful with this on the bench. Not tug on anything anywhere too hard. Just barely. But just barely is just enough, right? that. Set that back out of the way again. Ah, that's why it's so long. I already have a splice here in the middle. And my colors flip-flop. No, they don't. They go through and splice. Anyhow, I already had a splice there in the middle. Anyhow, there's going to be another splice on here. All right, and I wanted to flip-flop my colors around. Tip nicely, sling the extra off. Wipe my tip. Nice clean tip now. Alright. Let's tin these leads. Oh, 
and there's a little bit of hot solder on the bench there just stuck my finger on wasn't expecting that oh no I wasn't all right So I apply a fresh little blob of solder right there, right before I go to attach the two. That way there's fresh flux uh, to flow the joint together. As long as you see a little bit of smoke coming off of your, uh, coming off of it, you know you have uh, flux in the flow. So, there we go. And want to check them and be sure that they're not hot because this heat shrink sleeving that I have is very very close in in size to the uh, the diameter of this joint and if it is warm as I go to slide the heat shrink over it the uh, it will shrink up just enough to not fit and what has happened here the insulation of the wire has gotten a little too warm and it's puffed up a little too much for my insulation to fit we'll crank that down a little bit on this side it does go over so we'll pull that back see if I can pick at that insulation and get the puffy bit off. I think I did. Oh no. Let's trim that insulation up just a little bit. get the heat shrink over it. So now we will shrink that down. to pause here, heat up, shut off my iron, and uh, plug in my hot glue gun, and I'm going to squirt some hot glue in here uh, to hold this cable so it doesn't uh, do what it did in the first place and cause the same problem to reoccur, so I'll be right back. Alright, now that the uh, glue gun's had some time to warm up, 
and I've cleared some of this other stuff out of the way here. We'll uh, finish this up. I'm going to put a nice, woo, must have been an air void in there that I've just gotten past. Wow, rather substantial air void. <laughs> put us a nice, good sized dollop of hot glue right in there. And then set our wire down in. Get out. Get that out of the crack there so that our cover will go on when we're done. And that should that should work. Uh, let's go ahead and put the water away already. Let's go ahead and double check. correctly do you see there we go and this should be center negative No, I got it backwards. How did I do that? I thought I had this right. Let me double check. Center negative is what I'm looking for. Negative in my center. Yeah, so I got it backwards somehow. I'm glad I checked. I'll have to flip that. Uh, but this is this is pretty much down for now. No, yeah, but it, it needs to be. I shouldn't have yanked that out. That really does need to be there. Let me go ahead and throw some on top of it to just solidify it all in. All right, I'm going to go ahead and unplug the hot glue gun because we shouldn't need any more of it. Set it to the side and let it cool. It's always fun to pick the hot glue off the bench. There's a nice big dollop. The, uh... The truss that the camera is mounted on is mounted to the bench itself, so as I shake the bench, I'm sure you move quite a bit also. So, I'll put that back on. And that actually holds pretty well. I, I'm not going to bother. I was going to put some CA glue uh, around that, but that holds well enough on its own. I trust that. So, what I'm going to do. Seeing how there already was a, uh, a splice made in this, and let's see, it was like to like, so I'm going to do a flip flop here. I'm just going to snip these off. Alright, we'll plug this in again and see if it's magical double or magical two way wire. Alright, DC, DC. Uh, it should be center negative, outer positive. 
9 volts. Okay, here it is. And would you look at that. And there you have it, uh, back working uh, without the batteries. So. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please comment, like, subscribe. Uh, and serious about the comments. I, I love if people would make comments. I, uh, I want to know what you think. And uh, that's that. This is KJ4 PTD 73.